So I started doing some research and I found out that the number one thing that people used to use on their skin before, say, the 20th century was um, animal fat. Hey, health warriors. This is episode number 94 of the Life, Strength, and Health podcast. I'm Kim, and I'm joined with Jamal. Greetings, everyone. And uh, Peace and blessings. Yes, and thank you for joining us this week. That soundbite was from Andrew Gardner of Vintage Traditions, and we will be interviewing him for part three of our holistic self-care series. And uh, before we dive into that, if you haven't had a chance to listen to episode number 93, where we interview Ayana Williams of Aya's Natural Treasures, uh, make sure to go to lifestrengthandhealth.com for slash 93 to listen to that interview. Um, and as I mentioned, we in this episode are interviewing Andrew Gardner. And uh, in the first two episodes of our um, holistic self-care series, we dived into personal care products because it's very important to really understand what you're putting on your skin because whatever you put on your skin, your body is ingesting it. And um, unfortunately, a lot of times there are a lot of toxic chemicals that may be in our products and we're putting them on our skin day after day. And that can have a negative effect on our health. But in this episode, um, we dive into personal care products, but from an animal perspective. And uh, we had a really good time interviewing Andrew and learning about his products from his company, Vintage Traditions. And it was really eye opening. Um, we had a chance to try some of his products. They're really good. Um, but we're excited to share and dive into the animal product side, because a lot of times uh, when people hear natural personal care products, you automatically default to uh, vegan products or plant based products. Um, but there are animal products out there that are just as good for your skin. It's really up to personal preference. Yeah, this was a great show for me. Um, I, I love when um, we have guests on and. I'm I'm a student and I'm really just kind of learning uh, some things for for the first time. That's always amazing. That's one of the, the beautiful things about this show. Right, we a get lot a front of times, row seat. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we we get a chance to kind of be at the foot of of a teacher um, a lot of times. So this was definitely one of those shows for me where it just kind of you know just opened me up to a, a, a different perspective. Than, than the narrative that's out there. So I think in for a great show. So before we dive into the show, I'm just going to read a little bit about Andrew so you can learn more about him. Little did Andrew Gardner know that a trip to a farm in Mexico would lead him to embark on another journey, one to discover a practical solution to the modern skincare dilemma, a solution consistent with the true principles of nutrition and health. This journey led to the discovery of what people use for skin care before the introduction of man-made chemicals, as well as the science behind the traditional wisdom. Due to the lack of any product in the market that fit the ideal for healthy and effective skin care, he was prompted to create a formula that he could use and share with others, a simple recipe for a traditional nourishing and healing skin care. His quest began after a tour of a farm in Tequila, Mexico, where the famous liquor of the same name is produced from the blue agave plant. Even though the workers in this desert where the plants are cultivated did not use gloves, their hands were soft and not dry or calloused. He was informed that they had always used a balm, which was a mixture of beef tallow and a gel from the blue agave plant. This amazing new information was the impetus for his research into traditional skin care and what people used on their skin before the advent of unnatural substances such as petroleum products and chemically fractionated plant products. He published his findings in a research article about using tallow for skin care. So without further ado, let's dive into the interview with Andrew Garner of Vintage Traditions. Hey, Health Warriors, this is Kim and Jamal, and we have another great episode for you this week. This week, we are joined by Andrew Gardner of Vintage Traditions. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Hello. Great, Kim. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Glad to have you great. on, Andrew. Welcome. Hey, Jamal. Thank you very much. Glad to be with you. Yes. So uh, excited about this uh, this show. Yes. Um, I, I'll, I'll just say this. Um, I, I 
stumbled ap- across your your products actually through a, a another uh, podcast that uh, I was listening to. I was um, kind of studying uh, the animal. Right. I was studying the animal side of things as far as uh, nutrition is concerned. A lot of times, uh, you know, yeah, and, and I heard your. I heard your podcast on that. That was really good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just kind of looking into that because, you know, an, animal, uh, you know, just animal is, is when it comes to nutrition, whether it's nutrition for your skin or nutrition internally, it's been uh, villainized these days, right? So um, a lot right. of attention is going toward uh, more uh, vegetation and things like that. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm exploring the, the other side of, of things contrary to uh, the trends, and I came across across um, you first on the, uh, I think it was the Wise Traditions uh, podcast yes. through, uh, through Weston A. Okay. Price. And uh, I thought that, uh, you know, it was really interesting because at that time I was, uh, you know, really kind of looking into uh, uh, tallow and, and then the, the whole idea of, uh, you know, it being put on your skin was was fascinating to me so we you know started right. looking into your 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 products that that you offered so that was like my first introduction to you and you know one thing led to another and here we are so uh for those who right. who don't know um about your company and and you personally why don't you share with us your journey uh that got you into us uh, skincare products <laughs> Yeah, it's it's actually kind of a funny story. So I was in Mexico and I was on the tequila tour. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so before they take you to the distillery, they take you out into the fields. It's like a desert where they grow the blue agave that they make tequila out of. And um, the farmer was saying how they never wear gloves, you know, when they're working in this desert, um, but they don't have any calluses on their hands. And the reason was because they used um, beef tallow uh, mixed with the, the juice from the spears of, the, of these agave plants, which, of course, are related to aloe. Yes. Uh, aloe vera. So um, I was just... I thought that was really interesting. And I went home kind of thinking, you know, realizing what, what you all were talking about in your, in your podcast, that, that people used to use animal fats and eat animal fats a lot more than they do now. And then wondering, well, boy, I wonder if this was something that used to be really common and now has disappeared almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I started, yeah, so I started doing some research and I found out that the number one thing that people used to use on their skin before say the 20th century was um, animal fats. And the number one animal fat that people used was tallow. And, you know, tallow is the rendered fat, for for your listeners that don't know, is the rendered fat from any ruminant animal. So any grass eating animal, whether it be a cow or a sheep or a deer or, you know, whatever, Mm -hmm. goat or whatever. So, um, so I was just amazed by that. And I, I, uh, because, you know, now the use of animal uh, products in skincare is, is really looked down upon. Yeah. And, um, and as you already pointed out, even the eating of animal fats is looked down upon or, you know, any animal products for some people. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, go on. Oh, yes. No, we're, we're agreeing with you. <laughs> yes. And so sorry, I thought you were going to say something. So, um, so I was just really amazed by that. And I had these calluses that were uh, cracked and, and bleeding and I couldn't heal them with anything. And I tried, tried everything commercial lotions and um, the alternative skincare things uh, and nothing helped. And so I whipped up some tallow and mixed a little um, olive oil into it and put it on these calluses. And after three applications, they were like skin again. So I said, okay, there's something to this, you know? <laughs> so that's kind of how it all started. Yes. <laughs> wow. 
And because typically, right, when I look, when I do the times that because we're like huge label readers and we really try to encourage our uh, clients and listeners to really just kind of dig into the labels to understand what it is that you're eating or putting on your skin. And and typically when I'm looking at uh, these um, labels and I see animal products in there, one of the things that I typically see is the, the lanolin, right? Um, it, what is the difference between like the, the, the lanolin and the, uh, the, the tallow? So lanolin is an animal oil. It's, um, it's produced by sheep and it's, basically waterproofs their their wool mm-hmm. um so it's secreted from their skin and it and it um and it get and it's in their wool and um you know lanolin is actually a wonderful um animal oil for your skin as well mm-hmm. but the prob the problem with lanolin is it's hard uh, if it's not impossible i think it's impossible actually to get lanolin from a good source because um number one not only what you know they're feeding the sheep Mm -hmm. but number two pretty much all sheep are they go through these chemical dips where they actually yeah they coat their their wool with with chemicals that kill the the mites and the you know and the bugs and all this stuff so that all gets into the lanolin and then you're putting that on your skin. So unfortunately I don't, I'm not even aware of a good source of lanolin uh, I see. anymore. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and it, but it definitely okay. has its, its uses. It mm-hmm. definitely has its uses. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can get it uh, from a good source, but, but again, the number one thing, and, and I'm talking all over the world, um, that all of our ancestors used on their skin if they could if they had it available was tallow whether it was from a cow or a sheep or Mm -hmm. or you know an elk or a deer or whatever and or buffalo (laughs) and uh just kind of based on on your research that's something traditionally that you see all over the world including like uh, uh, uh australia africa asia things like that Exactly. All over the globe. Yeah. It's, it's really interesting. And I'd love for more research to be done on that because it was basically completely forgotten, uh, before, um, before I did the research into this Mm -hmm. and I, I had an article published about it. Uh, there were no, um, you know, basically no, uh, tallow skincare products on the market. Yeah. Uh, it just had basically, it had been completely forgotten. Wow. So, so it's, yeah, it's interesting isn't it, how our ancestors figured things out and then we, you know, we proceeded to just forget, you know, forget them, forget their wisdom. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. We, we talk about that all the time. Uh, that, that, that ancient, uh, ancestor, uh, wisdom and, and, and just the wisdom from as little as like our grandparents, you know, there's a lot of things that, that we've, uh, lost tradition from, uh, from doing. Uh, and it's so, so true. Yeah. And I'm just seeing that the more traditional things that we do, uh, the, the healthier we're actually, uh, becoming. And when we move away from those things, that's when we start to kind of get ourselves in trouble. So, yeah. I agree. Yeah, so we we know like what what kind of sparked the the idea for you to start doing the research and to uh, to start using those uh, for for skincare. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your company, Vintage Traditions, and exactly what you do, what 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 you offer, and and what would uh, separate you from you know other uh, companies that are out there? Right. So, um, vintage tradition basically started shortly after, you know, that, that whole story I just told you. Mm-hmm. And, and as I said, I had an article uh, published, um, that not only explained, uh, cause I, I proceeded to do a lot of research on the subject, you know, w- even to try to figure out, so why were our ancestors doing this? Mm-hmm. What are the things that are in tallow that, 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 are healing to the skin. Why does it work? And, um, 
But then it also in that article, I went ahead and explained how you can actually, um, you know, make it yourself at home. Mm. Um, and it's, it's not terribly complicated, but it is somewhat time consuming. So, you know, we found that there was a demand for um, people that didn't, you know, weren't, you know, DIYers and <laughs> didn't want to be sitting in their kitchen rend- rendering tallow. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, and so we, you know, so we make a, a whole line of products um, that uh, are predominantly tallow based and uh and just are just so healing to the skin because the tallow gives your skin you know what it needs to heal itself and um so my point there though was that um that you can certainly make it yourself and on our website we actually give instructions on on how to do it yourself if that's your if that's your bent Mm, (laughs) nice wow and uh, and on your um, website, like the, this original article that you're talking about, is that information on your website, or do you can you give us a link to to add that to our show notes? Yes, um, absolutely. That article is on the website, and it's um, it's under the more information tab at, at vintagetradition.com, mm-hmm. and it's called traditional nourishing and healing skincare. Um, it's a pretty long article. It's like a nine part article, uh, but really fascinating if you're um, serious about skincare and in particular, if you've got some skin issues that you haven't found, you know, relief from elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely list those in the show notes. Yeah. And I think that uh, it's it's really important for, for people to really begin to, to educate themselves and to understand because there's so many uh, people out there that want better skin. That, like that's the, the hot topic, right? Like how do you get better skin? How do you look younger? Uh, so especially women um, and our women clients, uh, they want to know these things. So it's important for them to really understand the other side side of, of things because all we typically hear is that you know animal fats are bad and you know people don't even know about this tradition so they wouldn't even think about putting it on their skin and initially the idea of it just the idea alone would probably turn a lot of people off putting animal fat on on my skin right so uh mm-hmm. it's important to be open and to to actually look at look at the study and and, and just kind of be open to that process right and i'd like to actually talk about that a little bit mm-hmm. um you know going back to our ancestors uh, you know all of our ancestors they were smart they, you know they didn't waste any part of the animal mm-hmm. so you know the and they would figure out what the dif- different parts of the animals were used useful for and um the uh you know people are used to putting plant oils on their skin mm-hmm. you know whether it's shea butter or coconut oil or or, or whatever mm-hmm. um and the, in fact, most of the lotions that you buy just in the grocery store are plant oil based. Mm-hmm. The big prob, the big problem though with the commercial um, lotions is that it's industrial plant oils, so mm-hmm. they're, they're extracted at extremely high temperature, extremely high pressure, which makes them go rancid and creates a bunch of free radicals, which is the last thing you want on your skin if you're right. trying to heal it or have youthful looking skin. You know, the last thing you want is spreading free radicals all over your skin. Okay. So, so the beauty of the of the tallow is, of course, that it's a, it's a whole food. It's, right. it's a whole food product, and whatever you put on your skin, your body's taking in just as if you ate it. Absolutely. Uh, that you know, yeah. That's why those transdermal patches work so great for you know nicotine patches or or the pain you know the pain drug patches or whatever. Um, so. And you're right. Some people say, well, I'm not going to spread, you know, animal fat on my skin. But the amazing thing about tallow um, 
it, it's a little different from all the other animal fats that you kind of think of, like maybe butter or, you know, lard, you know, like pig fat. Um, it's a little different because it's highly saturated, yes. uh, which means, yeah, which means, so the saturated fat content is very high, which amazingly it, it mimics exactly our skin cell composition. So when you put it on your skin, you don't only need a tiny bit, by the way, uh, because you know, a little bit goes a really long way. And when you put it on your skin, your skin just sucks it in mm -hmm. immediately as, nour as nourishment. So you're not left with any residue on your skin as long as you didn't use too much. Yes. Um, and so you have you no know, grease, you know, there's no residue. It's just a really nice experience, actually, to put it on. Yeah, you know, it's a couple of things that you said that that I think are, are really important, and and you just made me really think about that, like because we we touched on this a bit when we did our shows on fats and just how delicate most, probably like eighty five percent of the the different plant oils, like just how delicate they actually are, and uh, when a lot of heat is applied to them, not only are they creating free radicals, but, you know, trans fats, like, like a super, uh, super free radical. So um, I think that uh, it makes perfect sense because I know that tallow has an extremely high heat threshold, extremely high. So it stays stable. Okay. So, yeah, so it makes perfect sense that you're putting, you're not rubbing rancid oil onto your skin. And a lot of times you, you don't know how these companies are processing their oils. So you don't know if the oil is uh, rancid or not. It makes perfect sense. That is exactly right, Jamal. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. And and that's not even to mention all the other junk uh, that's in those lotions, mm -hmm. um, you know, all the other chemicals and even chemicals that aren't listed on the label that are used in the processing that are, by the way, you know, cancer causing mm -hmm. um, are in these lotions and, and they're not even on the label. So it's. It's all in that article I, I referred to, but it, it, we could talk about that just that one aspect for forever. Right. But it's pretty shock. It's pretty shocking. Yeah. And and I and I will say this, just you know, from a personal experience, and and, and Kim, you can uh, tell us yours. Like we we tried it, and so using because we we definitely use shea butter. Uh, we use. Um, Coconut oil. Coconut oil, jojoba oil. Mm -hmm. You know, we use the natural oils. These are things that we were using on our skin. And for me, it was like when you put it on, they, they're effective, but it was kind of like you 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 have a coating, like you're putting on some a coating onto your skin, whether it feels good or, or not. Like they, you you have this coating, even though your skin is moisturized and it feels good. It was it, it's like you felt like something was being a, a, applied to your skin, but with the tallow. It really does kind of soak in. It yes. really feels like, you know, you're just kind of improving your skin constitution um, in a sense. And it's it's really it's gone. And it's almost for a minute there. You have to just kind of use it and get used to it because you're so used to something actually being on when when it goes in. You know, it just, it just doesn't feel right. But when you look at at your, your skin, it's gone. If it, 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 it's it moisturized. Really well, it's good. Good. Yeah, it's, it's almost like it was. It's it's almost like it's the same oil as as your actual skin. It was meant meant for it. And another thing I was concerned about was what was I going to smell like. So you know, I didn't yes. want to have to. smell. <laughs> I was concerned about the smell, but there, you know, I didn't I didn't smell anything. I used a pretty lady. I think that was the pretty one. Girly, pretty girl, pretty right, right. Pretty and girly. that and that had a Perfect. nice um, smell to it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just to address both of those points that you both made, um, it is so true, Jamal, what you were just saying that. It, and again, it's because of the compatibility with your your biocompatibility with your skin. Um, it just uh, you're right with the shea butter, the coconut oil. There's nothing wrong with plant oils. And our ancestors used plant oils on yes. their skin, too. I'm not saying they did it. Yes. Um, 
but not as much as animal oils because they knew the effectiveness of the animal oils. And, and you're right, because the plant oils, uh, by definition, are not nearly as saturated. They're not nearly as biocompatible with our skin. And so you're right, they do. They, they kind of, you, you feel like they're just kind of sitting on the skin. Whereas I loved your description, whereas the tallow, it just, it just, it sucks right in. And then you're, you're right, Kim. I mean, the, that's the other concern that people have about animal oil. Like, am I going to smell like, you know, a T-bone steak or something? <laughs> <you know? laughs> and um, the, the, the bottom line, I mean, you know, we, have, we have one product, you know, that has no essential oils in it. Um, so it's just tallow and olive oil. And, and depending on how sensitive your nose is, you know, you can smell, you can smell the tallow. It's not very strong and it goes away pretty quickly. Um, but it does smell, you know, it's, it's sort of an earthy smell. Um, so it does smell a little, you know, a little maybe beefy or a little, it's kind of an earthy smell. Um, if you've never smelled tallow before. Um, but what we do is we add um, essential oils and we only use the, the highest quality therapeutic grade essential oils that are uh, better than organic Yes. Um, to add to the product. And they do two things. They neutralize, they neutralize the scent of the tallow and they also add additional therapeutic benefits to the product because there are a lot of essential oils that have a long standing tradition of being healing to the skin. So it's a pretty neat combination where you can have a nice smell and even better uh, effectiveness of the product. So now let me ask you this question, just kind of putting on my entrepreneur hat for a second and and just thinking about it from from a business perspective like usually you know when you look at a product you look at the the climate of of things and and what's going on like what right. made, yeah what made you make a move that was a actually opposite of of the the climate and and what was there a lot of <laughs> nervousness behind that like how how did that play yeah. out that's a pretty that's a pretty observant question you just asked. <laughs> because, because even now, so we've been in business since twenty ten and even now, eight years later, it's still it has gained so much um consciousness uh, among people since then, but it's still just uh, sort of on the periphery of people's yes you know, just at the edge of people's vision right. in terms of w what they would consider using on their skin. You mm -hmm. know? So it's still um, n far from being a mainstream concept, mm -hmm. but boy, it's so effective that once, w once people try it, they're, they're sold. Yes. Um, you know, obviously we don't have a market for vegans, but <laughs> beyond that, right. beyond that, if people try it, they're just like, this is like you were saying, this is unlike anything else I've ever put on my skin. And, and, uh, so slowly, slowly it's, it's, it's gaining consciousness, but you're right. I mean, it was a big risk, but it was just based in the fact that it was so effective. Right. For all kinds of skin conditions, you know, ones that um, are external, like calluses and dry skin and cuts and um, bites and things. But even ones that are more systemic, which you all would understand much better than me. Um, but as you pointed out earlier, people have so many skin conditions these days. Um, eczema and psoriasis and, you know, all kinds of, of skin conditions. And this can really help soothe that while folks like you are getting to the root of the problem, you know? Yes. Right. And, and, and just on a, on a level of vanity, cause I actually get some people that ask like how, how does it do in regards to things like uh, wrinkles on, on the skin? Does it help with that? I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I meant to mention that as well. So 
that we've had so many testimonials about um, using it uh, for wrinkles as a night cream. Um, and people are just amazed again by, by what it accomplishes. And, and really it's the same, in my opinion, it's the same mechanism because wrinkles, just like other skin conditions is really the skin not functioning as, quite as it should be. Right. And, and so if you give the skin what it needs to do what it needs to do, then it it's happy and, yeah. and it does and it. It does you know, it. It, right. it. It does what it needs to do. It's elastic and it's and it's um, you know not dried out and and uh, and so yes. Uh, to make a long story short, um, it people have found uh, a lot of our customers have just found great uh, results um, with you know wrinkles and crow's feet, um, you know, and, and and issues like that. What what about um, using it for uh, your skin and uh, like your I'm, your I'm not your skin your scalp and your hair any uh, does, it, does it help with that at all? You know, so we do have a lot of customers as well that have sent us uh, testimonials about um, using it in in their hair and on their scalp. Um, just, a you just take a very tiny bit and, and spread it on your hands and then, uh, you can comb it through your hair and it's so great for, um, you know, dry, brittle hair, mm -hmm. um, and, and to help moisturize the scalp. And, you know, we've got some folks that, that use a little bit more and actually, um, get, a, get some styling, uh, power out of it as well. Um, and you know, it's funny. We're talking about all these different things. It's like, I, you know, I'm imagining one of your listeners saying, oh, come on. You know, I mean, this is, it, can't, it can't be good for everything. You know? <laughs> but, but, you know, it's funny. I mean, if you if you think about it out there, you know, with skincare that's out there, they've got one product for your face and one product for your body and uh and they have to have separate products because maybe the one that's for your hands and your body is too harsh to use on your face right, right. or 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 too greasy to use in your hair or, or whatever the issue might be and this so have to have this multitude of different products the what the reason the reason you know tallow based skincare is so effective on so many different things is because it's just, it's just a whole food, you know, right. it wasn't designed in a lab it right. was designed by nature. So, and, and again, it just, it nourishes whatever you put it on. And if you want, we can talk about some of the amazing nourishment that's, you know, in tallow, um, but it just nourishes whatever you put it on and, and, and enables it to function the way it's supposed to function, you know? So that's really why it works out so many different ways on, on so many different skin conditions and hair and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes perfect and sense. Can, yeah. Yeah. And you can use it on your face or your hands or your body or anywhere. And it's never, ever going to be harsh. So, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I've actually been using it as a, as an aftershave. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, it, it works great. It definitely works, works great. It works. It, it, it soothes the, the inflamed skin after you, you shave. So, uh, so yeah, I agree. And, and just kind of looking at it from a holistic perspective, you know, when you're using, uh, natural things, it, they become multifunctional, right? It's not just for this one yeah. very specific thing. It's multifunctional. When you look at things from a holistic perspective, you're not going to just look at vitamin A and it just has one function in the in, in the body. Like uh, holistically, you know, it, things have multifunctions. So it makes that's perfect a sense. Great point. And, and yeah, it, that's a great point. Yeah, and right now, right, like the the trend is uh, 
especially within the past few years is, you know, like coconut oil, right? So we would see all of these memes that, you know, coconut oil is good for this and it'll be this <laughs> whole like list, a hundred things that coconut oil is good for. And, and now it's to the point where it's just like, sure. just rub coconut oil over it. So, you know, maybe one of these days that <laughs> we'll have tallow memes like that, you know, like a, a, a thousand uses for right. tallow, yeah. just rub tallow <laughs> over it and <laughs> it may, maybe it'll catch to, to, to that level. <laughs> Because you can cook with it. You can cook with it just like coconut oil. Put it on your skin, your, your hair. I don't know about yeah. uh, tallow oil pulling <laughs> uh, where, where they, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. I've, I've never tried that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it seems like it's definitely, um, you know, up, com- up and coming. But, yeah, really quickly, though, that would be great if you could just kind of give us just from a, a nutritional perspective some of the things that uh, compose on its oven and what, what it's doing when we're using it. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so a couple things. Uh, first is that, of course, it, it's important where where the towel is coming from. So it's important how the, the cow was raised, um, just as with, you know, with anything. Um, so you really, uh, as we do, you really only want to use um, tallow that comes from 100% grass-fed cows mm-hmm. um, because that really makes a huge difference in the um, in the uh, composition of the different oils that are in the tallow and in the uh, amount of vitamins in the tallow and the micronutrients that are in the tallow. So grass-fed, grass-finished beef that haven't been sitting in a uh, feedlot eating grain is, is important. Um, you know, out there getting the sunshine, eating the green, rapidly growing grass, all, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and you also want a product that is has the highest tallow content possible. Um, because the tallow is what, uh, as we've already discussed, is, is what's really the, the magic ingredient. Um, we add a little bit of olive oil to our product. Um, olive oil has some really great benefits for the skin as well. And, and as I discussed before, some essential oils uh, to give it some additional um, therapeutic punch and, and, a, nice, and a nice scent. Mm-hmm. Um, but your original question, Jamal, was what what's in the tallow? That's great. So we there are a bunch of different types of oil in tallow. You you think well, it's just oil, right? One kind of oil, but there's uh, conjugated linoleic acid, palmitoleic acid, arachidonic acid. These are all uh, you know chemical scientific names for different uh, types of oils. And they all have the, their own amazing properties that have been you know, proven in, in scientific studies of being anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, um, even an, anti-cancer properties have been shown. Um, and then you've got all these great fat-soluble vitamins. And as, as you guys know, there are some vitamins that are only available in animal fat. Yes, because because they're yeah, because they're fat soluble. So vitamins A, D, K, E are in tallow in abundance, all great for the skin, all very nourishing. Um, And then uh, in addition, you've got all those great minerals and micronutrients um, in there as well, because, again, it's a whole food. So it's been designed you know, it, you know, nature made it that way um, to be this balance, perfect balance of all these different nutrients. So um, that's another topic that's that's pretty deeply covered in in the article. But okay. uh, that's kind of a good overview. <laughs> and how uh, do the uh, your products do as far as uh, I, I know that it's not the the initial thing, but do they do anything as far as protection from from the sun when you put them on? Any type of blocking or protection? So we've never actually had it tested to see if there's like an SPF value to yeah. it. <laughs> um, but you know, and I hate to sound like a broken record, <laughs> but. But, but, you know, our skin, it, it, it was designed to deal with the sun, right? So if our skin's healthy, 
it, it can do that. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, and so again, if you know, the use of the, of the, uh, of the tallow balm gives your skin what it needs to, to function the way it's supposed to be functioning and to deal with things like sun and wind and whatever else nature throws at it. Right. You know, I, w- I wouldn't be surprised, even though there's no direct study, I wouldn't be surprised because high, high antioxidants will, uh, protect the skin, um, even just taking them internally. Uh, and then w- when I think about just the, the level of saturated fat with that, it seems like that would automatically protect you as well. When we talk about the, the rays of the sun and the heat and things like that, it seems like that would just be a natural protectant. And obviously, it's not going to be a sun block, but we're talking about just natural protection the same way it would be if you put shea butter or or coconut oil on your skin as well. So I'm, I'm imagining that um, the same principles would apply. Great points. All great points. So uh, what would you say your flagship product is? So um, we started out with uh, four products. Uh, one was our, uh, we call it our totally unscented. And that's just the tallow and the olive oil. And some people just don't like anything, any scent at all. Um, and some people are, are, have uh, uh, some serious health and skin conditions that even the incredibly high purity of essential oils that we use in our products, even those, um, people with some severe health issues can, can have a little trouble with. So that's great for those people. Mm. Um, then we, then we have a, what we call our almost unscented. So with that one, we added a couple essential oils that have a long standing tradition of being uh, healing to the skin and also have that added benefit of, of neutralizing the, the tallow smell. Uh, the, te- the scent of the tallow. And so those have lavender and uh, cedar wood essential oils in them, uh, the, the almost unscented. Um, so it's just a very mild scent that disappears. And then we have uh, one for men and one for women uh, specifically. So we have our pretty girly, which is a floral scented one for women. And has that has some great essential oils specifically for wrinkles and crow's feet. And then we have our mild manly, which is just a nice fresh scent that actually women love as well. And, and again, um, we just always stick with the essential oils that are also going to benefit the skin. Um, so those are really our four flagship products are our biggest sellers. Um, and then after that, we have a whole line of, of other uh, premium scents which use essential oils a little more expensive. Um, they have a, a little um, uh, more refined scents to them. And then we also have a, a men's deodorant and a women's deodorant. Um, we had a lot of customers telling us that they used our balms as a deodorant, which based on what I was telling you earlier, that um, tallow has nat- natural antimicrobial property to it, uh, makes sense. And then, uh, so we were like, oh, that's, that's great. You know, it's amazing. And so then we added, uh, some essential oils that also have uh, odor fighting, um, qualities to them. So you kind of got the one, two punch of the tallow plus the essential oils. And so it makes just a great deodorant that you don't have to worry about, um, aluminum, you know, coming right. through your skin and right. getting into your bloodstream. Yeah. <laughs> and let, let me uh, just jump in really quickly and say that um, I was a little skeptical on the deodorant, but it works. It does. <laughs> I was skeptical too, but it, it does works. work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really works, you know. Yeah, a lot. And it, Go ahead. Uh, I'm glad to hear you say that. And, yeah, and, and ours doesn't even have a lot of natural deodorants you'll find have uh, baking soda in them or, or other things that, you know, are, are pretty harsh on the skin. Yeah. Irritate a lot of people's right. skin. Mm-hmm. 
you know, our deodorant has the exact same ingredients, just tallow, olive oil, essential oils, nothing harsh, nothing that's going to irritate anybody. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty neat. It's yeah. pretty good too, I think. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, one of the problems that me personally that I would have with the natural deodorants is one of two things, either that they they don't work or they're, I guess, so strong that they're, it's irritating, you know, it make me kind of sore. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so no, this is, you know, you get yeah. getting the benefits of both and it, it really works. Um, so I, I think that's great. Makes, makes perfect sense. Thanks. Thanks for saying that. <laughs> so, uh, we really appreciate uh, having you on uh, yes. and, and sharing your wisdom with us and, and really educating our listeners on just the power of your products as well as just, you know, tallow in general. Uh, where can our listeners get more information? Where can they, they follow you um, and buy your products? Well, thanks. Uh, yeah, I, I would just really recommend that they take a look at our website. Again, that's uh, VintageTradition.com. And um, there's so much information on there if, if you're, you know, a fact finder type. Uh, and then on any page of our website, um, anyone can sign up for our newsletter. And we we, we only send them very occasionally so we're not going to be spamming your inbox <laughs> and, uh, but we always have interesting information and testimonials in the newsletter and by the way there's a whole slew of testimonials for various skin conditions on our website which are really fun to read and look at uh, the before and after pictures that some of our customers have sent us um, we're also on Facebook if you search for Vintage Tradition um, and um and the other thing I was going to say was just went right out of my head. <laughs> I think you asked me one other thing uh, where they could get more information. And uh, anyway, so yeah. there you go. That's basically a rundown. <laughs> and and I, also, I also just want to say, because I'm really big on names and things like that. I, I, your name is pretty cool. Vintage Traditions. I, I really like your name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, we we really wanted to get across the idea that we've been talking about that. Yes, this is this it, this is what people have always used on their skin. Right, and and just we just want everyone to to remember that basically. <laughs> yes, and, and and just be and just because it's so healing. Um, and and it works so well. So thank you. And uh, one question that we always ask our clients, I mean our guests, uh, at the end of the show is uh, if there was only one thing that a person could do to improve their health, what would you suggest? So th- you know that's a great question, and. Um, I I kind of alluded to it earlier because most skin conditions have at their source something else, not the skin, right? Mm-hmm. That's, I think we can all agree on that. And so finding someone like like the two of you that can help them work through those issues um, and maybe improve their diet and find some some solutions. Um, you know, maybe they've got some gut issues. Gut healing needs to happen because oftentimes, if you need, if you have uh, gut issues, then you're going to have skin issues. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and so so finding someone like you that isn't going to throw drugs that are going to just cover up the symptoms and is actually get to the root of the problem, I think I think that's the number one thing. And then in the meantime, if your skin needs you know a little help, uh, you know a little re- if you need a little relief from the skin condition, um, you know use some tallow balm, um, but get to the root of it, you yes. know, and, and, and that would be my big, big advice. <laughs> right. And then after you get to the root of it, keep using the tallow balm, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Because, you know, if you're as healthy as, a, as an ox and, 
and you don't have any serious skin conditions, you know, there's always dry skin, there are always calluses, there are always cuts, uh, there are always wrinkles. Um, so there's always, it's always good to take care of your skin. Yes. <laughs> Well, Andrew, thanks so much. We really appreciate having you on. Yes, I gotta say, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, yeah, oh, it was thank fun. Thank you, thank <laughs> you, and uh, yeah, like I said, like Jamal said, thank you so much for sharing the knowledge. Your company continue to do the work that you're doing. So yeah, thanks. All right, Ed. thanks again. So that is the conclusion of our interview with Andrew Gardner of Vintage Tradition. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode, but most importantly, you received value from it. And for access to the show notes pages, where I'll list Andrew's uh, website, their social media. There's also links for a uh, recipe if you want to make your own uh, tallow product and a report Andrew wrote on using tallow. Um, so just go to lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash nine four to access all of that information. And before we go, we just wanted to let you know that this episode is sponsored by our private health community, healthwarrior.co. Healthwarrior.co, as I mentioned, is our private health community where we help you to reach your health goals um, using a natural and holistic method. And we provide the education and accountability and support to do that. And there are tons of member perks as well. So to learn more about our private health community, just go to healthwarrior.co. So thanks again for listening. Stay tuned for next week's episode. And until next time, live healthier. We want to say thank you for listening to the show and for access to the show notes pages, more podcast episodes, blog content, as well as more information about our center, Life, Strength and Health, then just visit us at lifestrengthandhealth.com. Until next time, live healthier.